organizing the conference, we had various topics. There we go. And one of them was a letter to my younger self. And nobody chose that topic. And I thought, well, hmm, wonder why. Discovered that everybody was younger than I was, so I needed to take the topic. Um, but it, it made me stop and think about what we would give as advice to younger lesbians, to younger women in the business. So I said, OK, let's try this. And it reminded me of the It Gets Better project. Most of you in the room are familiar with that. And you know, we're trying to help our young gay and lesbian, bisexual, transgendered folks understand that it does get better. And you're here because it, it did get better, right, for you. Uh, I remember back when I didn't even know the word lesbian, but I knew I was different, right? And I got teased, and there were cruel girls in school, and I tried to fit in. Didn't really. Um, but I didn't have the role models that you can be for our younger selves that we see uh, in the business and, and elsewhere. Uh, so I thought about it. And it does get better. But one of the things that our young people don't understand is that it gets better when you make it better. You have to participate in that. And one of those paradoxes, as I talk to my younger self, is that it gets better when you help others. And I had the fortunate uh, opportunity when I was younger to go to a camp in the summer. And I told my younger self, you know, it was really good that you had the crush on the camp counselor. Yeah? Um, because you went on to be a camp counselor, and you went on to help other people. And oh, by the way, it gave you a whole different peer group to relate to. And you got out of yourself and got out of that, that self-consciousness of being different. And so helping others is always going to be a way. And there's a paradox there. You end up getting more than you give. But that's one of the things to my younger self, I would say. And it, there are several things up here. One of the most powerful as a young person is to understand that what you think of me is none of my business. So yes, you will experience a wise woman in your life telling you these things. And having the understanding of that gives you your power back. And understanding that you can change your thinking and change your reality. That makes a difference as well. So, so understanding as a young person the power of your mind in changing your reality in the way you think about what people do to you. Um, those are things that are going to be important as you grow up. And as you, we all grow in the business, we will learn that we make mistakes. And certainly, I have made many along the way. But it's how you deal with those mistakes. It's what you do in your business life, in your personal life, and how you deal with those mistakes that really are the measure of your character. And in doing that, you've got to learn to ask for forgiveness and move on, um, because those are the things you can't dwell on uh, as you go forward. But one of the things that learning along the way is to learn to play a team game. And you heard that I was introduced that I had played sports. Um, but one of the key things I learned then was that it's not how many points you scored. Because as a young person, I cared about how many points I scored. But I learned that it really was whether the team won or not. And it didn't matter if I only scored a few points if we won. And if we helped each other win, we all got the gold medal. You know, It wasn't a zero-sum game. It wasn't the beauty pageant that we have in the US that says, there's one winner and everybody else loses, right? When you learn to play in a team, and we women don't do that very well often, when you learn to play on a team, you will claim power in a different way. And you'll learn that, that, that winning is easy to share. There's plenty of credit to go around when you do. 
Now, one of the things you'll learn along the way, and I certainly did, was how to lead a team. And the first thing I learned was how not to lead a team. Um, I can remember being at the Center for Creative Leadership and going through some exercises there. I thought, I know how to do this. I'm a good leader. I I'm competitive. So we got into the exercise. Sure enough, I stood up and so did somebody else. And we got into a competition for who was going to lead the team. And we made the team totally dysfunctional. Absolutely, totally dysfunctional. And we got that feedback immediately that, you know, our, our team compared to the other teams, because we had observers of this, that our team was awful. And we'd created that in trying to be the leader. So I kind of took that to heart. I kind of was depressed about it when we went to our next exercise, because I thought it was good, you know? <laughs> so we went to the next exercise, and I sat back. Somebody else got up on the board and wrote the notes and took the pen. And I learned to listen. I sat back. I listened. I asked questions. And our team finished the exercise first, faster than anybody ever had done. And the evaluation was that I was the real leader in the room. And I was going, wait, 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 wait. You know, I tried to be the leader, and I wasn't. And when I focused on other people, I became a leader. So along the way, you learn those things, right? And they're not necessarily self-evident. Along the way, you learn to have courage, to be able to be yourself. If you're lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, learning to be yourself is one of those things. Having courage, differentiating yourself in the business is, is important. And again, surprisingly, there are paradoxes here. When I came out, I was afraid, you know, I, I was going to ruin my career. And I enhanced it because I was different from everybody else. I was seen as a person of courage. And I got access to senior management, surprisingly. There are paradoxes here. But the question to ask is, what would you do if you weren't afraid? And I wish I'd asked myself that earlier on as a younger person. What would you do if you weren't afraid? So you know, telling my younger self some of these things, in reflection, you think, gosh, what could I have been? What could I have done? And, and the other thing was to just relax and enjoy. You know, I was really, really intense uh, uh, growing up. And in fact, had no sense of humor. Um, and that's one of the things. I, so I started making a list, right, of things I wish people had told me along the way. And I wish I'd had this list when I was a teenager, a young adult, or a young professional. Heck, I wish I had this list when I was an old professional. Um, but that sense of humor, as, as women, we, you know, sometimes we're, we're way too intense because we're having this double glass ceiling, and we're having all of these things to, to contend with. And it's a, it's a tool in your toolkit for not only sabotage, but to just regulate your own intensity. So I, that's a thing I have to practice. I'm not very good at that one. Um, learning to communicate. Again, another paradox. You know, we're, we're all told we need to be sensitive and try to figure out what other people want and project and, and, and do all of this. But the key to communication is actually being really clear about what you want. So how many of you in the room have ever had this conversation? Honey, what would you like for dinner? I don't know. What would you like? I don't know. What would you like? What would you like? You know, and you end up fighting. Have you ever done that, or am I the only one who's ever done that? <laughs> OK, so what happens if you change the conversation and says, you know, honey, would you, what would you like for dinner? I don't know. I had Italian for lunch, so something other than Italian, and maybe somewhere where I can get a salad. And the other person says, OK, well, I'm interested in a steak. Let's go to the steakhouse. They have good salad. And you're done. You're done with the conversation, because you've been very clear about what you want.
So the key to communication is really in making your own self clear. And in learning about communication, the other thing is to match the medium to the message. As a young person, I had no clue about the internet and email and Twitter and Facebook. But I would say to us now, non-routine messages, we need to do face to face. We need to at least have dialogue. We need to talk to each other. Right? We can't tell somebody something that's hard or complex by email or by Twitter. Right? Don't break up with your girlfriend on Twitter, please. <laughs> you know, it's not the thing to do. But that's a real important skill as we change the dynamic of social media. Uh, and, and along the way, I've encountered people who had stacks of email escalations. And when I finally told them to talk to each other, they got it solved in 15 minutes. Amazing what that will do. Um, be very good at something. You know, I say this to women, I say this to gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender folks. People aren't going to fire you if you're really, really good at something. You know, be passionate, be good. Find that skill, be, be value add. Uh, you're not going to be at risk for your job if you're good at what you do. And choosing to see things as opportunities instead of obstacles is the only consistent thing that researchers have found on talented women across nonprofit, government, uh, corporate. All these women with different skills and different education backgrounds and different roles, the only common thing on successful women was they saw things as opportunities and not obstacles. And so, again, back to that first thing. How you think about things makes a difference. The power of your mind is very, very important. Know when to ask for help. How many of us have tried to do something over and over and over again and haven't gotten it done, but we said, by damn, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to make it happen. I'm not going to ask my male colleague or my older colleague for help. This is, this is a powerful skill. Do it in two hours instead of two weeks. You know, Ask for somebody who knows how to get that done to help you. The other thing that I learned, particularly growing up, is to be consistent. You know, I thought hierarchy was real important, you know, and I was going to take care of my boss. I was going to be really nice to my boss, nice to my peers, but the people underneath me, well, they were there to serve me. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You know, the key to corporations are the, the administrative assistants, by the way. Um, they're the ones who really run the place. And that's when you get trust when you treat everybody with that same consistency, whether they can do anything for you today or not. The last one on this page is one of my favorite, though, because the saying is, it's not you know, what you know, it's who you know. You've heard that. But I would say, no, it's who, who knows what you know. You know, women are really bad at telling people how good we are, what we've done. And apologies to the men in the room, but you know, there's some studies that say men spend 50% of their time doing things and 50% of the time telling people what they did. You know, where women will spend 95% of the time doing things and 5% of the time telling people what they did. Tell people. Let people know what you know. I've gotten some of my most interesting jobs that way. It's, it's quite a powerful thing. Okay, let's get the... And then a few more here on the list. <laughs> Nobody's going to take care of your career except you. Nobody is. You'll, you'll be amazed, you'll be surprised if you think somebody is. They'll disappoint you. They'll disappoint you. <laughs> Develop your own skills and your own external network. That's what you're doing today. That's what you're doing today, and that network will pay dividends. Um, prudent risk, you heard Sophia talk about that. But step out of your comfort zone. <clears throat> We're not good at that, and neither are our, our corporate brethren. So many times they say, no, this woman's not ready for promotion. She needs to, to make sure that she's going to succeed. But we'll, we'll take the guy and give him a challenge. We'll give him a stretch assignment. 
We've got to be at the point where we are willing to take the prudent risks and our corporations are willing to do that too. They're willing to let us have the same equality of opportunity to fail, right? We have to have that kind of equality, but we've got to be willing to step up and take those risks. Asking for what you want is also something we're not necessarily good at. And part of, a, part of it comes from the fact that you can do a lot of things. We multitask, right? But I've been asked, oh, what do you want as your next assignment? I've said, well, I can do this, or I could do this, or I could do this. And I finally had somebody say, pick one. Pick one. Tell me what you want, and I can help you get there. And sure enough, I ended up in Finland. Now, Finland wasn't exactly where I wanted to go, but I wanted an international assignment, so I got, I got it. Um, <laughs> can I say? <laughs> Committing first to yourself. How many of us are willing to commit first to ourselves, to eating right, to doing your exercise, to, to continuing to learn or do your, your hobbies? We're, we're really bad at that. We're really bad at that. We feel like we have to take care of our families, our spouses, our jobs, everybody else. Commit first to yourself. And then you have the ability to commit to someone else or some other job or some other thing. Living authentically is something that you guys are doing because you're here in the room. But to, to our younger selves and our younger colleagues, that makes a difference. It takes energy to hide. It takes energy to be in the closet. And it also takes away from your teaming and everything else you bring to the table if you can't answer the question, how was your weekend? You know, what did you do for the weekend? And you're spending your energy being somebody who you're not. The next one is one of my favorites. Do what you love. Live the life you love. Love the life you live. You don't have to be doing something you hate. The, the, the most successful people in the world are doing what they love. And if you're not giving yourself permission to do that, you're missing out on a lot. The last couple are real important. This happiness being the spiritual experience of living each moment with love, grace, and gratitude. Those are things I've had to learn about along the way. And, and that very wise woman that I encountered told me that love was a one-way street. And you say, one-way street? I thought it was a two-way street. But no, you can't make somebody else love you, right? You've got to be responsible for what you do and the choices you make. Grace is something you know, we all hope to develop in terms of our own kindness and generosity as we, as we mature. And gratitude really occurs when you stop and count your blessings. It happens naturally when you take time to think about how fortunate you are. And you are to be sitting in the room. And to our younger selves and our younger colleagues, we'll say that too. It does get better, and you'll have those blessings to count. But to those younger colleagues, to those younger selves, we'd also say a couple of other things. Uh, life is limited. Days are numbered. And when, when you're young, you think, oh, I'm immortal. You know, I can't imagine not being around, right? But say to yourselves and to your younger selves and to your younger colleagues, you know, live each day to the very fullest because you're trading a day of your life for it. And it's a good thing. But remember the last one. Don't delay joy. Find joy wherever you can. And don't delay it. And oh, by the way, it's one of those good things is you'll be all right. We'll get through the glass ceiling. We'll make a difference in the world. And it does get better. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today representing IBM, and I will remind you that IBM just announced its first female CEO as of January 1st, so yes.
And for those of you who don't know, she has a lesbian sister, so she's going to be a good ally. So uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for networking. Thank you for what you do. But think about your younger selves. Find the people who you want to make the path easier for and do it. Thank you.